Well, hi everyone and welcome. We're gonna go ahead and get started this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Darcy Carlson and I'm the Director of Education Consultants at Britannica. And we've heard from quite a lot of you already through the chat. Um, and I encourage you to continue those conversations there throughout the webinar today. And also ask questions there throughout the webinar. You can use the chat to do that. And when you do that, make sure to set the bar to all panelists and attendees. And then you can also use the Q&A section to ask questions. And we'll be moderating the, the chat throughout the session. So both myself and also Danielle from Pear Deck. So feel free again to type those questions in throughout. And we're all really excited about sharing these resources with you today. Uh, last year, Britannica and Pear Deck teamed up to pair the trusted content of Britannica launch packs with the engagement of Pear Deck. And today we're going to be looking at some best practices in using these resources together to support virtual learning. Facilitating that, pre uh, that conversation today are our presenters, Kelly Johns, the Assistant Director of Education Consultants from Britannica, and Risa Bennett, who's the Program Manager of Education and Outreach from Pear Deck. And both Kelly and Risa are former classroom teachers who now work with educators from around the country to engage them in using educational technology. So with that, Risa, I am gonna pass it over to you. Thank you so much, Darcy. And thank you to all of you for being here today. I just wanted to give you one last opportunity before we get really rolling. I'm gonna put up the join screen here. If you would like to actively participate in today's session, you can open up a browser window and go to joinpd.com and type in this five letter join code. And in, that, in doing that, you'll actually be experiencing Pear Deck like a student. So if you would like the student experience today as we move through this session, please go ahead and join. It is not required. If you would like to uh, just watch and join in via chat, that is completely fine. So in the next hour, you're going to find out what Pear Deck is. You are also going to find out what launch packs from Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica are. And then you'll learn also about our partnership with launch packs powered by Pear Deck. And then we will save time at the end for your questions as well. So you can put those questions in the chat if you would like in the Q&A. We will also have an interactive slide towards the end of the session where you can enter your questions into Pear Deck. So feel free to post those wherever you would like whenever you're ready and we will address as many as we can at the end. So I'd like to start by knowing a little bit about my audience. If you joined the Pear Deck session today, you might see that you have an option to select from four four multiple choice options on the right side of your screen. So why don't you go ahead and take a moment and respond, and that way I can find out how many brand new users we have or how many um, diehard Pear Deck users we have. And I'm gonna go ahead and project these responses so you know what kind of company you're keeping right now. We've got people all over the board. Um, you should see on my screen right now uh, that I've projected how many are responding to the different options. And you'll see that it's also anonymous. So if you're in the minority and you don't know anything about Pear Deck, you don't have to feel bad that you don't know because no one knows what answer you gave. And that is the same if we were in a classroom or if I was leading a, a remote class um, with students. So for those of you who don't know what Pear Deck is, I want to tell you first of all our mission. And Pear Deck is on a mission to help teachers deliver powerful learning moments to every student every single day. As a tool, we ourselves are not powerful learning moments, but we try to equip educators to deliver those themselves via Pear Deck. So I think it's safe to say that everyone here that is participating is probably uh, leading some sort of educational endeavor from your home, from your living room, and you are not in a real life classroom right now. So I'd like to know what best describes your remote instruction environment right now. Is it synchronous where you're leading things in real time? 
via video or is it mostly asynchronous where students are doing self-paced work or are you doing a combination of both? And again, I'm going to project your responses. It looks like most of you are doing some combination of both, and a lot of you are doing asynchronous instruction as well. My next question is, what kind of devices do your learners have access to? So far, you've tried out our multiple choice questions. This is what we call a drawing slide. So using your trackpad or your touch screen or your mouse, um, go ahead and circle what devices your learners have access to. And if you get really brave, you'll notice that you have a, a vast color palette at the bottom of your screen if you wanna try out some different colors there. So again, I'm going to project your responses and you'll notice this will be a little bit different than how we looked at multiple choice responses. I can view a lot all at once here in my grid view. And again, they are all still anonymous. So no one has to feel self-conscious about their drawing skills. Um, but in this case, I kind of want to see hotspots. I want to know what the vast majority of your students have access to. So I'm going to project the responses in an overlay here. <laughs> well, we have a lot of participants. That is not that effective. But it is some really great abstract art, yes? So I have another question for you. And I imagine that it, this is a softball question. This is a draggable slide. So you'll see a blue dot in the corner of your screen. Again, using your trackpad or your mouse or your touch screen, drag that blue dot uh, to your answer. And because dots are so fun, I'm actually gonna set a little timer here so we know how much time we have to give our answer. Maybe. So you'll see a little timer on your screen here, and that is counting down the amount of time you have left until your screen will be locked and your answers will be locked in. So I like to give this with draggables because it's so fun to drag your dots around. And I'll show you just how fun that is to watch it live in real time. So look at that. I'm seeing answers come in in real time without having to hit submit. But you know that you have about five seconds to lock in your answer before you won't be able to answer anymore. And so now your screen should have gone black and it says your teacher locked your screen. So this is a pretty good little management tool when you're ready to have students um, lock in and that way they can't change their answers. So that was an easy question. I think we all believe that students deserve a voice. But I have a little bit of a harder question for you. Do you feel like in your classroom or in this current learning environment that every student of yours is heard, that you're able to hear from every student every day? And I'm gonna give you just a little less time here now that you're familiar with how the draggable works. And again, I'm gonna also highlight a quick management technique that is possible with Pear Deck. This time, I'm gonna lock your screens on the fly. And again, you should see that your screen went black and that your teacher has locked your screen. And now I'm gonna, now I've waited until your answer is locked in before I show your responses. Man, and it looks like we're all over the board. Although it looks like most people landed most strongly on uh, disagree. Now you probably still see dots moving and that is something to do a little bit with our Wi-Fi and the number of people we have participating. Trust me in a normal setting this would your dots would not still be moving. <clears throat> so we all agree that every student deserves a voice but we definitely don't feel confident that every student in our class is heard and that is why Pear Deck was created. Our goal is that with Pear Deck, every student has a voice to participate and that every teacher can get, get deeper insight into their students learning via Pear Deck. 
So all this time, I'm able to see right away, even though there's several hundred of you participating, I know uh, exactly how many people are comfortable, are participating, and I can actually see which ones of you are silent as well. And that is the goal of Paradox and of this interactivity that you're enjoying right now. So because we're living in this moment of remote learning and because I'm all about modeling and giving best practices, I want to share some insights with you about how uh, to use video conferencing best practices for instruction. And this applies really whether you're using Pear Deck or not. Um, First of all, you want to use a, a tool that you and your students are most comfortable using or that your school or district has recommended. Of course, you don't want to go against whatever policy your district has put in place. But if you've used, if you know that you and your students have used Google Hangouts the most, default to that one. If you guys are most comfortable with Zoom, default to that one. But whenever possible, use whatever one is comfortable with. I also recommend being prepared ahead of time, making sure that you're setting up your audio, your visual, whatever screens you're presenting at least five to 10 minutes before class. That way you're not caught, you know, clicking or troubleshooting when students are trying to join. You've got everything running smoothly before they air quote arrive. Um, I always recommend to recording the lesson. This is great for students who miss it and it's also great for asynchronous learning opportunities as well. Um, whether it's letting kids review it later or students who missed or maybe even for you to go back and double check, sanity check that you said what you intended to say. Um, if you're sharing your screen, make sure the, of the fact that you remember that you are sharing your screen. So whenever possible, close out of any chat or you know, messages, text messages, emails, so that you don't accidentally reveal anything you don't mean to reveal to the students who are looking at your screen. And the same with any other tabs, um, bookmarks, or extensions that might generate notifications for you. Close down as many of those as possible. Now, Paradox can be used for synchronous or asynchronous instruction, but again, when we're talking about using video conferencing, um, we'll want to talk about how to manage your screens and your windows during this time. So I have here how you would want to have their, excuse me, have students arrange their screens. So just like you are right now, you are my students at this moment. So ideally, you have your Zoom. Um, window open there to the left and then your Pear Deck browser window open on the right or whichever side so that you can see both because as you may have noticed if you are joined as a student I'm showing answers sometimes on my zoom or projector view but you still want to have your browser window open to participate as a student so as a teacher then you'll want to have um, either two either two windows open or perhaps a second device. Because what I have not revealed to you is that even though uh, you are seeing answers anonymously on the Zoom screen, I actually have a second window where I can see each of your names associated with your responses. So to harken back to what we were saying about um, every student having a voice and students having insight or teachers having insight into student thinking, I can actually see which of you are struggling, which of you hasn't used Pear Deck before, which of you uh, have students that don't have access to devices and so on. So um, I have two monitors, so that means that I can have my projector view open on one big screen and my teacher dashboard on the other. But if you don't have that set up at home, you might want to open up a tablet or a phone to drive your teacher dashboard off of where you can see students' names. So I wanna take just a moment to let you see a little bit more in terms of our template offerings. Um, Pear Deck exists in, the, in Google Slides in a sidebar as an add-on. And so you can create slides from scratch, but we offer lots of templates so that you do not have to create your slides from scratch. So I want you to take a look at some that we've created for you so that you can instantly stand up a lesson and make it interactive. So this is a slide that we've designed for younger students. And this again is a drawing slide. If you want to circle all of the items that start with the letter B. And all of our templates are completely editable. So if you were studying a different letter with your littles, you could change the text on here to be a different letter. And you could change all the images as well to any images that you have saved on your hard drive or that you find on the internet. 
And all of you are such smarties. I just want to show you how smart you are and which ones that start with B. Great job, guys. Um, we're looking again at a draggable here. And again, you could edit the images here. You could edit the text. And if you want to drag it to the correct hemisphere, Well, I'm trying to show you, but my Wi-Fi is lagging. Oh my goodness. There we go. We're just gonna move on to the next one here. And I apologize if my screen is lagging. I'm sure you guys have all been in this boat uh, with me a few times as you've done remote instruction, hoping that your slides change. It looks like perhaps we're not quite synced up. I hope that you'll bear with me. Oh, good. You'll notice that we have slides for littles, we have slides for science, we have slides for math. And really, Pear Deck is well suited for just about any subject area. Sometimes you have to be more creative and sometimes it lends itself very obviously. All right, you guys know your graphs. I'm very proud. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to toggle this presentation to student paste mode. And what that means for you is that now you're going to be able to drive the slides at your own pace and answer the questions at your own pace. So I have uh, I have put a stop sign slide a few slides away so you have a visual prompt of when to stop. When you reach the stop sign slide, please do not go any further than that. Um, but I do want you to explore the next few slides on your own. So down in the bottom right, I'm going to click on these three dots and I'm going to select turn on student paste. You'll notice there's a link here. If I wanted to, if I wanted to start this lesson in student paste mode all along, for those of you doing asynchronous instruction, you can do this from the get-go and share this link with your students in Google Classroom or whatever LMS you're using. Now in your own screen on the bottom left, you should see toggle arrows so that you can move through the slides at your own pace. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna let you know that I can see who is on each slide and how many students are, are on each slide. And I can see who is responding to each slide. So I have not lost visual control of my class. I know if anybody has a question or is being inappropriate, and I know that a couple of you went past the stop sign slide because you're just so curious. <laughs> Um, so take another moment here. You don't have to feel obligated to answer these questions necessarily. I just want you to get an idea what the student paced experience um, looks like for students. And if you are, if you are past the stop sign slide, I ask that you please go back to the stop sign slide and not go past it and ruin the surprise of what's next. All right, I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds here. Um, so if you're browsing slowly, I ask that you browse a little quicker. If you are struggling with your geography as it looks like about 75 of you are, don't get too hung up on it. We have more interesting stuff in the following slides. Again, if you've gone past the stop sign slide, I do ask that you go back and you stay on the stop sign slide. I don't want to ruin any of Kelly's surprises. I have a couple people in the chat asking for the join code again. So I'm just going to try to pop that up for you here if my Wi Fi will allow. There it is. <clears throat> All right, if you're asking in the chat for the join code, it's right here, it should be up on my shared screen. For the rest of you, uh, if you wanna just take a moment and get to the stop sign slide, otherwise I can also bring you here myself. I'm going in five, four, three, two, one. And now, 
If I can get my screen to catch up with me again, I'm going to down here in the bottom right again and I'm going to click stop student paste. And in a moment here, when my Wi Fi catches up, all of you should be synced back up with me again. Okay, so student pace has ended. You should all be back with me. My slides are not synced up. Can somebody tell me if you're seeing um, a stop sign slide on the big screen or if you're seeing ooh, something else? I appreciate your patience as <laughs> my screen catches up with me. Um, if you see choose a prompt, that's great. That means you're seeing, okay, good. Now you should be seeing, well, let's see here. Let's see if we can get to the right one. Thanks for your patience, guys. My Wi-Fi just kind of throws up on me here. Oh, we will get there. I'm sure you guys can all probably sympathize with this. I'm sure I'm not the only one whose internet was not prepared uh, to support so many <laughs> people. Okay. It looks like you should all be seeing how to make your lesson interactive with Pear Deck. It is so simple. I just want to highlight these steps for you very quickly. When you are in Google Slides, you can open the Pear Deck add-on or install it by going to the add-on menu at the very top um, and then opening your Pear Deck add-on. Once that pops up, you'll see here in the GIF in the middle, or the GIF, I think it was confirmed, uh, where the sidebar opens up and you can add interactivity to your existing slides. And then the final step is that you hit that green present lesson button and that is what generates the unique join code, the experience that you had when you joined this lesson today. I want to assure you too, I've gone over all of this information very quickly, but it, everyone who has joined the Pear Deck session, at the end of our session, when I end it, you'll be receiving a doc with a, with a student takeaway. And a student takeaway is a Google Doc saved to your drive that will have all of the slides from this presentation and each of your individual responses to those slides. And any slides that had links on them, you'll be able to access those links later. So if I went really quickly about what Pear Deck is or you wanna be able to go back to these three steps to create your own Pear Deck, don't worry. You will have that recap in your inbox after the session is over. Now that you've got a little preview of Pear Deck, it is time to jump into launch packs. Kelly, is your yes. audio working? <laughs> yes, I actually realized my audio was still on when I laughed out. <laughs> <laughs> one of you, of you scolding some attendees. Um, welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much, Risa. That was wonderful. We are going to start with another question for you. And Risa, I'm going to have you actually read out our results um, or put the poll up there for, for the, um, our attendees. And I want to know how much do you know about Britannica Launchpack? So uh, be honest while you're doing that. I want to know um, I want to say thank you for being here. These are definitely hard and confusing times for everyone, um, but I think they're especially for students and teachers and, that, and librarians, that's, that's you guys. So thank you so much. Um, so let's see, it looks like Britannica lunch packs are going to be new to a lot of people. That's wonderful, that's why we wanted to do this. Um, I was really hoping, I was, I was hoping that B, well, I was hoping that D was the answer, but I was hoping that B was the answer too, because, um, you know, we always hear Britannica, oh, you guys are still around, I remember those. Um, maybe we've heard stories of paper cuts from Britannica, everything. Um, but yeah, we've been around for about 250 years. Last year, we celebrated our 250th anniversary, um, and we're delighted to be partners in truth with you um, right now. So, oh, great. I, I have some messages in the chat box that I would like to do both A and B. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we'll, we'll uh, recap where we've been since 
since those days where you guys were using the Britannica set. Okay, I'm actually going to, um, oh, okay, great. That was the next slide, perfect. So let's take a look at what Launch Packs is. Um, it is a content set of high quality content. So within that, you're going to find um, great appropriate materials, articles, images, videos, primary source documents, Pear Deck activities, and so much more. And you're gonna see all of this as we get through the resource, but I like to point it out at the beginning as well. Um, Launch packs was always was actually created because we kept hearing from educators that they were spending so much time looking for both trusted content and age appropriate content. Um, you know, at Britannica, we have a huge editorial process. There's fact checkers. Every article um, goes through fact checker to fact checkers. There's editorial standards. We have content specific editors. There's actually uh, five or six sets of eyes before a um, a piece of content goes to goes to the resource. Um, but also we were sitting on, on this content. We had all this content and it is trusted. Uh, we've been known to, um, to, you know, that's what we're known for. Um, the other thing I, I think I want you guys to know the most is that it really is a simple and flexible tool. One of the biggest points, points I want to, you guys to take away is no matter how you use launch packs, they're really easy to share. So especially during this time when we're exploring e-learning and you know, remote learning, if what you're doing is just, hey, I'm going through the routines and procedures of getting my students onto, the, onto you know, a resource and doing homework at home and things like that, you could start with Launchpack. If you are, um, if you have been, if you're kind of a pro at this and you know you're working with your standards and you're working on the content that you would have been covering, um, you can do that as well. And I, again, I'll show this all there as well. And then it really encourages active use through of uh, and supports critical thinking and ELA skills. And you're going to see this through, um, through through a number of activities and different support tools. You guys are the teacher. You know how to teach. These are just things that are in our the product that will help you do your teaching. All right. So I'm actually going to um, share my screen um, and take over because I want to do a little bit. Of, of an overview before we actually get into this, um, the, the Pear Deck activities for today. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm here at the um, Launch Packs homepage. And we're going to do a little bit of overview. Again, feel free to ask questions. We have people manning the chats. I taught third grade. I'm used to interruptions. It feels weird when, when people don't ask questions. So feel free to do that. Um, so again, we have uh, both Britannica Launch Pack Social Studies and Britannica Launch Pack Science. And we're giving um, access to this resource during this time. Um, so if you aren't set up yet or haven't um, received access information or didn't know that, you could get access to both, both of these resources. There are about 2,000 social studies packs and also 2,000 2, science content packs. We're going to stay in the social studies mode today. Um, a, about 200 packs in social studies come with pre-made Pear Deck activities. So our editors and educational consultants went through the content and we basically using Pear Deck and using these content uh, packs put the journey for your students to go through when they're using our resource. Okay, so at the top, um, again, this is kind of just a general overview. This is the home page. You can see I'm logged into my personal account here. Um, my name is in the top right corner. Um, but we have all the content that we have access to. This is kind of that pin board page. When I'm looking for content for my specific students, I'm going to want to use some of the filters that we have available. So we ha can filter by different grade bands, pre-K through second, third through fifth, six through eight, and nine through 12. I'm going to do six through eight for now. I also want to show you all of the different categories. So again, when you're thinking about the content that's covered, you can really dig into the different topics that we have here. The other thing you can do is just perform a search. So at the top, I'm going to start typing in ancient Greece because that's what we're going to be using today. Before I perform this search, I do want to say that you can also search by, by standards. So in social studies, we have ELA standards that you can correlate. We also have um, 
your state standards. We, and then for in Launchpack Science, there are ELA, NGSS, and the state standards as well. I'm performing my search on ancient Greece. It looks like Darcy is answering um, your questions. Perfect. And I'll, I'll cover some of these um, other questions as we're going through. Perfect. Okay. So you can see these, this is my results for ancient Greece. I still have that current filter on. And these are all of the launch packs at the sixth through eighth grade level in launch pack social studies that I have access to. Um, you can see that right from here, it kind of tells me what will, what I can expect to find in that pack as far as content goes. We're going to end up using this pack right here. So I'm going to point out that you can see from here, I have five articles, five images, a video, one website, and a Pear Deck activity. So if there is anything listed um, there, as for example, a Pear Deck activity, it will be there. We also have in your follow-up email today, I'm going to send you a document that has all of the packs that already list a Pear Deck activity. But I do want you guys to know that you can always add a Pear Deck to any pack that you have. So if there happens to be a pack that you know you want that doesn't offer a Pear Deck activity, it's really easy um, to get started creating one. Okay, I'm going to head into our origins and geography pack. And I'm about to show you all of the features and content pieces that you'll find in a pack. But first, I want to show you right from this page how easy it is to share the content. So you can see the content is below, and we'll go through that, like I mentioned, in a second. But right from here, if I'm just using this content, I can start by sharing this directly to my Google Classroom, to my Microsoft Teams. If for some reason I'm not using a Google Classroom or a Microsoft Team right now, I'm using a different LMS, I can take this unique link, every single pack has a unique link, and I can share that with my students. So I can put that right in, um, someone was asking about Seesaw, I can put these right in Seesaw, uh, I can put that right into whatever LMS I'm, I'm using. You can also use email if you know if you need to as well, or using it for planning with a coworker. Okay, so this pin board view is very engaging. Um, and, you know, it really enforces student choice and that self-based, you know, learning or discovery. You can see all of our articles are here um, in blue. The videos are in red. Images are in purple. If we scroll down, we have primary source documents are in gold. And then your Paradox activity is found at the bottom um, in orange. And again, we're going to dig into, I really, because I think part of Part of what e-learning, what makes e-learning so hard, one of the many things, is that you know the, the students don't have you to support them the way that you know that they need support. Um, so I do want to show you the supports that we have, and we're going to dig into those when I go through uh, the Pear Deck as a student. But I do just want to show you, uh, again, all of the content that you can um, see, and this, like, for this pack, it doesn't have a primary source document, but um, there are full text primary sources in some of the packs as well. I do want to quickly point out before we get into um, when, where we go through the Pear Deck, you do have the opportunity to customize a pack. So in this mode, you can change displayed reading levels. You can add personal content. If any of this content is outside the scope of your lesson, you can easily remove it or delete it. Um, and then you also have um, activities. So I just wanted to point these out. These are kind of, these are like ready to, uh, to use question sets that can be assigned to students via the Launchpacks platform. So again, designed to foster comprehension, work on inferencing, things like that. Oh, everyone's getting so excited about, about the resources. Me too. Okay, so, um, what I do want to do as a teacher view is I want to show you how you would launch this Pear Deck. And Risa, Risa kind of went over it, but I'm going to show you from within the, um, the Pear Deck. And then we'll get into marriaging the Britannica's content with, the Britannic, or with Pear Deck's um, engagement activity. So as, I'm, as an educator, I am going to um, click on Open Pear Deck Activity. So this is going to ask me to make a file to my Google Drive, it, it's a copy. As a student, um, if a student clicks on this Pear Deck activity, it actually opens them up to that joinpd.com link that you, uh, for those of you that followed along, typed into a new um, 
tab and then you would um, eventually get the code for your students as well. Again, I'm already logged in to my Gmail account, so I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Um, so I would make a copy it a copy of it. If I wasn't logged into um, this, I would need to log into my Gmail account so that I uh, can use this. And when it makes a copy, again, it's going to um, allow it so that I can um, edit these slides at any point if I wanted to as well. And I'm, I'm going to um, just quickly show you, and Risa kind of went over this, uh, but you do have instruction cards in every single pack. So if you were like, how did Kelly and Risa do that? We'll get you, there, it, there are this instruction card in every single Pear Deck. And then that add-on, and I'm not gonna launch it, but I do wanna just show you right here is where you would um, make these slides interactive. Because right now, they are just, they look like normal Google Slides, uh, but they will be interactive through that um, Pear Deck add-on. All right, let's see. <laughs> okay, um, I am, we're going to switch gears um, for a second, and I'm gonna pause my screen and join as a student. Um, I'm gonna join the class that you guys have already been in. So this is still, letting um, Risa is still the teacher here and she's going to present in the teacher um, as from the back end. I again again am going to show you the student experience so that I can show you the Britannica content and the features that your students have access to. I do want to say that if some of you um, like if some of you are people who like to follow along with multiple screens and you, screens and you don't have access to launch packs yet um, and you're you know following along with this it may ask you for an access ID and passcode um, I'm going to act as a student that already has that information if you don't have that information don't worry about it um, I will uh, show you where you can sign up for that COVID um, relief uh, these resources that's part of the COVID relief that we're offering. Um, but just so that you weren't freaked out as you were watching it, if you are someone who likes to follow along. So again, I am a student now. You can um, hopefully see my screen and I'm going to dig through the Britannica content. Risa, can you just uh, set me to self-paced mode so I can, you don't have to pass me along for this. You're all good. Just got to hit skip on your okay. screen. Oh, what if I want to uh, let you know how I'm feeling? <laughs> I'm kidding. Even better. I love to know how you're feeling. Okay, perfect. So as we um, get into this, let me get to a slide where we're started so we don't go through the whole presentation again. Let me fast forward you really fast. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> no worries. So this is the beginning of the pair deck activity. And again, this is the student view. So I have joined your class. My first task is to watch this video. That is what the pair deck is telling me. So this is the Britannica content. And I'm gonna play this video in just a second. We won't watch it fully, but I do wanna show that right from this page, you can also download these videos. This will download as an MP4 file. Um, we also have the full text along the bottom. So if students do need that as they figure out, if they, as they listen, you know, to the video, uh, there is a narrator, it's a human video, but they do have that full text along the bottom. We also have the ability to, we offer, and this usually brings around a lot of smiles, but we do have the ability to, uh, we offer citation for citation styles. So we offer APA, um, APA, MLA, Harvard, and Chicago Manual of Style. So students can easily cite their resource as well, and you can scaffold that conversation as you're introducing the resources. Um, all right, so I'm gonna play this video. Ancient Greece advanced politics, philosophy, and art in exceptional ways that influence Western civilization to this day. You guys learn all about ancient Greece um, and how it um, impacted. Uh, Western civilizations, but that is the focus of this pack. So we will want to be mindful of that. So again, um, you can see there's closed captioning for students. If they wanted that, I leave mine on. I can take it off if it's um, disabled. They can disable it as well. 
Um, okay, so let's moving on. Again, I'm in student pace mode. So, so as a student, I can move to the next slide. And this is, again, checking for um, comprehension. So I would have watched that video. I can drag the yellow flag to indicate the Mediterranean Sea. I can drag the green flag to Athens to locate Athens and the red flag for Sparta. So I am going to go ahead and do my best again as a student, right? We're just, especially with these times, we're just kind of checking for comprehension here. Um, checking, you know, doing those comprehension checks, see where we need to go back, um, things like that. So I'm ready to move on to my next slide. And in this slide, it's telling me to read the Greek city-states and their col uh, colonies in this article. So it's a portion of the article. This is the Britannica article. And before I complete this task, task, I really want to show you some of these features. Along the top, you're going to notice these reading levels. So we performed a search at the middle school um, level, our middle school content. We had that sixth through eighth grade filter on. If for some reason this text is too hard for my students or, you know, it's, um, it, I, I can't understand it, I can't read it without support, things like that, I can always jump down and access an easier reading level or I can jump up. Um, so it's, it's a really great way to kind of advocate for students to differentiate for themselves to have that reading level on there so they can pick and choose that reading level. I'm gonna leave it at reading level two here. Um, I'm going to show you the annotations in just a second, but I do want to show you some of the page tools. And you can find these features and these tools. These are in every single path. First, we have an increase and decrease font. So, you know, if I'm a student and I want that modification, if I have an IEP, um, if I'm used to, you know, if I just want the text to be a little bit less intimidating to me, I can make that, that font um, larger. I can also de decrease it as well. Um, I do want to point out that we can print it. I know a lot of schools are, um, a lot of, it, it differs by classroom, but some of us maybe, if our students don't have access to the digital platforms or to devices or to even Wi-Fi, we can print these materials as well. Um, so we can print it. Um, again, automatic citations are all there, so we can easily use that. I do want to point out two of my favorite features. Uh, this, this next feature is the translate piece. So this is powered by Google Translate, but with this, I can translate this article into one of 80 different languages. So again, this is wonderful for students that English, you know, might be their second language, um, but we've really seen it to be so helpful with that parent to school connection, especially in this time as parents are becoming, you know, um, supports for their students. And I can easily go back to show original if I wanted to. And then we do have the ability to make an excerpt for um, any portions of our, um, of our article as well. So that is there. Um, one other thing I want to point to before I complete this task is I want to point out something called the Quick Click Dictionary. So if I'm a student and I'm reading along, right, I'm reading through this content and I come to a word that I don't understand or I, I, I can't remember or it's how I need it to make sense of the information, I can double click on any word in the article and it gives me the definition as well as the pronunciation, as well as the pronunciation and the Spanish translation. Um, so there is a Spanish translation, you can see that there. So that's a great vocabulary building tool within the content and the context of what your students are learning. And again, you might need to, you know, when we're doing this, when we're going through this, maybe the first time the students are reading this, they're just looking up un unknown words. And then the second time they can actually go down to this section. All right, I'm just about ready to complete my task. I, uh, task. I'm going to um, click on annotations and just kind of toggle into annotation mode because I, I definitely want to show you that as well once we get into our section. So I'm going to use my table of contents. I'm going to find where it says the Greek city-states and their colonies, and I am going to um, begin working on this, uh, reading this section. Now, one thing I did not mention yet is that we do have the ability to have the article read to your students. So I just want to play this really quickly. 
the Greek city-states and their colonies. The Iliad tells how Greeks from many city-states among them and work while she's on, so I'm going to turn her off. But you did see that the text was highlighted for students, um, and they can jump to the next paragraph. They can pause this as they're learning, especially in student pace mode. I love this feature here as well because I can go back and forth between the slides. So this is the content that, that this paradox is asking me to go through. I'm getting some background information about its development. You can see that um, there are images displayed that help me make sense of some of the information that I just read. Um, so again, here we're talking about how um, you know, the, the landscape was mountainous and coastal. And so because of that, it was, you know, they had to defend themselves, which led to city states and democracy. And it goes into um, how they protected themselves, how the cities were set up. Again, there's an image right next after that portion of the text to again, kind of give the students the visual um, to again, make the context more meaningful to them. Now I did toggle over to um, annotations mode and I want to show you that um, as a student, I have the ability to highlight, oops, sorry, to highlight a portion of the text. Oh boy, there we go. I just got a, a cordless mouse yesterday. I was so worried about this. There we go. So I could, push, I could highlight a portion of the text and this pencil icon comes up. And then because of that, I can take a note. And it even spell checks for me. And then I can even, uh, and again, as, as I mentioned, we really want students to, again, think critically and reinforce some of those other um, ELA skills. So then I can think, is this a question? Is this a comment? Am I looking for vocabulary? Am I reading for evidence? Am I providing a, summer, a summary or is this a connection for myself? So again, I'm just going to toggle that or I'm going to uh, make that annotation. I, those, I can have those access to those annotations as well as I go through, you see, as I scroll through and read the rest of my, um, from my portion there. So again, um, just to finish up this portion, it's talking about the terrain here and what that did for, um, for ancient, ancient Greece and the colony. So I'm done with this portion. I'm going to go ahead and again work through my answer. So the ancient Greeks traded mainly across land routes. I'm going to go ahead and say that that is false. Again, we're just checking for comprehension here. What you guys have actually done one of these slides. Um, in this slide, it is um, asking me to draw a check mark over the answers that apply. And so I'm gonna say, yep, they are mountainous. There were plains as well. Um, there were many coastal settlements and islands as well. Again, I'm doing the best I can. Risa can see my responses um, as my teacher, just like she could see yours before. And then um, my last uh, pair deck, slide asked me to kind of synthesize my information and so I would go ahead oh boy drink threes played a large role in its in its development and I would fill in why it does I could add, also add additional responses and then when I'm done, every single pair deck ends with a kind of check-in. Um, so depending on how you use these, again, um, you know, I can use this as my exit ticket. And again, think about, I, I think one of the most interesting conversation, conversations that are happening not only right now as we end the school year is what school will look like um, next year. Um, and so when we're thinking about will it be part-time at school, part-time at home, you can really think about how you might use these Pear Deck activities with the content and, 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 the, and, and your teaching skills as well. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going I'm to say I am a pro now at Ancient Greece and, and its geography. And I think with that, let me just check 
the uh, chat box really quickly. It seems like um, Darcy has been answering questions through here. We throw, we showed you guys the translation piece. All right, we have some Paradox questions, Risa, about feedback and student feedback. So I think that is um, the perfect time for you guys to kind of you to talk about student results and, and assessments as well. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to end student case mode. And I will uh, go ahead and share my screen now. And on your screens or in your Pear Deck by now, you guys should be able to type questions into a text box in your Pear Deck. So if you want to start typing your questions, we will get a few of those answered before we wrap up. And I did see you had a questions about feedback. Currently, you are not able to respond directly to students via Pear Deck. Um, but you will see when you receive your student takeaway at the end of this session how you could leave feedback after the lesson. I'm going to go ahead and project your questions here and we'll just go through a few of these. Okay, no questions. All right, looks like some people have questions about uh, pricing for launch packs. Um, Kelly, would you are you comfortable answering some of those questions or should we direct them to email you later? I am not comfortable answering <laughs> those questions, um, but we can definitely get you, um, get you that information. Um, I, I share my contact information at the email, I'll share or in, at the, in the follow-up email and at the end of this presentation. And I will also put it in the uh, chat as well. Wonderful. So someone asked, how long will the material be available? Um, I'm wondering, is this, I'm wondering if this is um, talking about the resources that we're offering for COVID during COVID-19 right now. Um, and, and if it isn't, feel free to answer another question. Um, I, both Paradox and uh, Britannica have uh, made commitments to and to offer this. Um, we've we've been offering, I would say, our 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 pre Pear Deck is offering their premium resource and uh, their premium account, and we're offering our launch packs uh, for the last seven weeks and um, at least all of May. That's right, and we'll we will show you those links here in a moment of how you can get a hold of us or how you can um, take advantage of those offerings. Oh, good. You, you guessed correctly, Kelly. I'm seeing oh, good. the response. So that's great. Um, let's see. Someone asked, I noticed most of the launch packs had Pear Decks in the 6th to 8th grades. Um, will they be adding for elementary, especially 3 through 5 or K through 2? That's a great question. So we have a couple of different options. It's something that we're always scoping. Um, you know, we started this at the beginning of the um, webinar, we talked about our partnership and our partnership is relatively young. Um, so right now those Paradox are all in sixth through eighth grade, uh, but we can also, we also offer custom solutions. So if that is something, you know, K through fifth grade that your district is, if you're really familiar with Paradox, we could work through that. And, um, you know, we can also have, have more conversations with Paradox um, to, to create some of those. But I do want to say that you can add a Pear Deck to any pack as well. That's right. Um, I, have, I have one more question here I'm going to answer and then we're going to wrap up. Um, someone asked, how do I submit my question on Pear Deck? There's no option to submit. The great news is that uh, I'm receiving your responses in real time. There is no need to submit. So I can actually watch my participants as they're typing their questions. So that way students don't have an excuse like, oh, miss, I forgot to hit send, you know, because they didn't respond. I can see that thinking coming through in real time. All right, that concludes our webinar for today. Thank you all so much for being here. I do wanna show you as we wrap up here, um, on the page in front of you is a link to accessing resources for remote instruction with Pear Deck. And you can also find our offer for our 
pre free premium upgrade um, for the remainder of the school year in the summer. So be sure to take advantage of that. And then finally, here's how you can get a hold of us at Pear Deck and at Britannica. Uh, Kelly and Darcy, thank you so much for uh, co-hosting this with us today. If you have any final remarks before we close down, I know they would love to hear from you. Thank you guys all. Uh, this feedback is making, is making my day. Thank you so much <laughs> for this. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. And as a reminder, if you uh, by joining a session today, you'll be receiving a recording of this uh, webinar. So if you missed anything, don't worry, we'll be sending that out tomorrow. Thanks again for being here, everyone. Um, take care and be well.